Hello, my name is Nathan, your nuclear DM. I'm in a weird mood. I was considering calling this channel DMs only, or Dungeon Masters only. And I still feel that videos I make on this channel are basically just going to be for Dungeon Masters. This is going to be full of spoilers for some adventures, so that's why this is D Dungeon Masters only. And before I begin my tips, I actually thought the first thing I would do is explain the qualities you need to be a good DM. Be sure to leave a comment to tell me how wrong I am, whatever. But in my opinion, if you don't have these qualities, you're not going to make it as a dungeon master. The first is reading. Because unlike players who typically only read things if they can gain an advantage out of it, a dungeon master has to read absolutely everything. This is your first time playing Dungeons & Dragons, or any RPG for that matter. You have to at least read the main rule books, but still, you have to read all of that first in order to know how to play the game, because you are the governor of the rules. And then, if you want to learn a module, you have to read the entire module before you even start the game. Then you might be like, well, I don't have to read everything, because I'm going to make my own adventures. But, you know, then you have to write a bunch of stuff down, and then you have to read your own writing later. So, reading, and also writing sometimes. Number two imaginative. I'm not saying that every DM has to be the most imaginative person at the table. That is really not the case, but you have to have, at least have enough to like run NPCs in realistic ways, to know what's going on at all times with or without a map, and to kind of visually interpret what the players are telling you that they're doing, which isn't always easy. And the last quality, I think, that all dungeon masters need to have is stubbornness. Because you have to be the person who's willing to put their foot down and say no to players. At the same time, you should also be the one who's willing to say yes to some of the crazier things players want to do, but only within reason. But being stubborn, being the guy who just won't let players do certain things, it's very important to have. If you let players walk all over you, they will. If you don't like reading, you're not like super imaginative, and you don't like being the bad guy amongst your friends, then being a dungeon master probably just isn't for you. Here's 11 tips for newer dungeon masters. One, use a module for their first time. Most pre-written adventures, like Lost Mine of Fandelver, which you can find on D&D Beyond for free. And the reason for that is that you're probably going to screw up, but if you're following along with an adventure, you'll kind of see at least how other people do it. And you might see a little bit about what not to do. Like how in Lost Mine, I mean like, some people might like linearity in their RPGs. Just the DM basically telling you what's going on, and then what do you do, and then like figure it out from there. But for the most part, players don't enjoy being railroaded, which is what that is. And that's how, kind of how Lost Mine starts out. It's a very railroady start throughout all of chapter one. The reason I recommend doing a module instead of homebrewing your own thing right away is mostly just that like, you're probably, you're gonna screw it up. <laughs> Everyone screws up their first DM round. If you, like, have beginner's luck and wind up not screwing up your first round, you'll screw up the next round. <laughs> or the next one. And with a module, you can at least see how other people have written adventures, so you can kind of get some idea on how you should do it yourself. And also some idea on what you should and should not do. Tip number two. Your job is not to be an amazing storyteller. It's to let everyone have fun. Now, I really mean that, because I think a lot of DMs kind of forget this, too. That you're not trying to, like, make a plot. This isn't people playing through this book you're writing. This is you and a group of friends making a story together. And you're not even in charge of it, really. But you shouldn't think of it like that. You should always think of it as these people playing your game are the main characters in your story. They're in charge of everything that happens in it basically and screws everything up for like everyone else in the story or makes it better depending and you want to create an environment where people can do that you know where people can just start kind of playing off the things you say tip number three don't look up too many rules while playing just in general like i would say only do it if you're absolutely sure that there's a rule for it and you know exactly where it is in the book otherwise just make a call or ask the players first sometimes players know more rules than you do call for a skill roll or just make a call on how the rule is played this time maybe mention something like well i'll make a note of it now and look up the rule before next time but for now let's just do it this way <laughs> and if they argue with you about it just remind them that this is your game they're Playing, and they're all locked in there with you and not the other way around. Number four, give the players an advantage at first. This I think is just basically saying don't kill your level one players right off the bat. 
I mean, like, if, like, level one players for some reason are facing down a dragon, don't just have it be a murderous dragon. Maybe it talks to them instead and taunts them a bit because it sees how weak they are. That type of thing. Instead of just being like, oh, dragon, you're dead. Well, that was a fun game for me. <laughs> you know, because the goal, like I said, the goal is to let everyone have fun. And no one really likes being a level one character anyway. So you should kind of give them an, an advantage. Like, the, the players are there to play heroic people. And they're not really that heroic at level one. But most don't want to end up making a character and then getting them killed right away and as a dm i mean like as long as you're not like showing the players what you're rolling you can kind of lie in favor of the players you know maybe the first time a monster attacks it gets a critical hit i give you full permission to make that a regular hit or even a miss if you want i mean don't go too easy on them of course don't make it obvious or anything because players also want a challenge Things are better overall when they feel they've earned it. So hurt them a lot, just don't kill them right off. You know, it's a role-playing game where anything can happen, so make anything happen. Number five, don't railroad, let the players drive the story. This one just, I mean, I already kind of mentioned in an earlier point that this isn't about the players going through a plot. This is about the players doing what they want and your group creating the story together. Railroading is, I think, the biggest sin a DM can do. And it's one that new DMs almost always fall into. Number six, you're not a party member, don't play like one. By that I mean that oftentimes you'll hear the players start talking to each other to kind of get an idea of what they want to do next. That does not give you permission to start giving them hints and stuff. That will start feeling like railroading immediately. Likewise, if an NPC starts following the party around, they aren't part of the party. Like, the PCs might start liking that person but even then you should not treat them like a party member start playing them and be like this is my character you know and stuff like that just don't don't do it because that's not your role your role is to play all the npcs know what the npcs want themselves and then play it like that okay number seven don't let the players walk all over you but let them do what they want within reason if you give them an inch they'll start taking a mile and again, it's your job to put your foot down and say no. But for the most part, let players do what they want with their characters. Just don't let them, like, start strong arming you, being like, well, I think that's a bad call you just made, or whatever. And then you're like, okay, maybe you're right. It only did three damage instead of nine, or whatever. You're the DM, and what you say goes. And that's part of the fun, right? For the most part, you should kind of just be a neutral observer. And don't let the players walk all over you. The players will try to get what they want from you, but they have to, like, kind of say no or disallow players from doing things that are unreasonable. And that'll be different for each player and each DM, too. Number eight is NBCs are people, too, as are most monsters. Not every monster, most undead in Dungeons and Dragons especially, are just mindless idiots. They will just attack players until they die. But monsters and NPCs usually have goals and wants and things they want to do and the things they want the players to do. I mean, some sometimes that's just they want the players to die. And I bought this book called The Monsters Know What They're Doing, and that talks a lot about how for the most part, animals don't want to die. Nothing wants to die, right? Again, undead, it's arguable. No one's really sure what they want. I mean, aside from, like, vampires. Most, most undead, like zombies, mummies, you know, ghouls just want to eat people. But most monsters, if they take enough damage, will run away. Or might start begging for their life, or things like that. My advice there is, like, anytime there's a monster in a game, look it up in the monster manual. Read how that monster behaves normally, and kind of put your head inside of it. And just be like, why would this monster want to attack the party? Is it because it's hungry? Is it because it's scared? Is it because it's just an angry monster? I mean, there's just always reasons behind every action, and you should consider that while you're playing monsters, especially. Tip number nine. You're going to screw up, so screw it up. But don't take it too seriously, basically my point there. Just, just you're gonna screw up whatever it is you're doing, so just learn to roll with the punches instead. Know that this is an improvisational game, even though you probably have a lot of notes about whatever you're about to do. It's still a bunch of improv. These are just like suggestions on how the story might flow, and once it doesn't do that, always have a backup plan and be able to improv. Learn, learn to improv better. That's why you need a good imagination and my qualities of a dungeon master. Number 10. Don't over or under prepare. That kind of goes with what I was saying at the last point. Isn't that like, there's a right level of preparedness 
<laughs> for every dungeon master. And I think that might be different for every dungeon master, but for me, it's definitely, I need to know everything that's going on at every point of every dungeon. I need to know vaguely what's going on with every NPC before the PCs get to that dungeon. And that's it. I can look through the module, I read every room, I make a map, I put everything that's in that room in that room, and then I know understand how that room works. I need to do that in order to understand it, that's me personally, maybe you might just read over the adventure and be fine, or write up your own and you're good, but for me I need to have everything set up just so I understand it all. And then I usually quit for a while, you know, like I, I give my brain like an hour, two hour break before we start, because that's usually better for me not to have everything just jumbled up in there. And I'm, then I don't feel like I'm just cramming for a test, because you know, when you're cramming for a test, as soon as you're done with the test, like everything just leaves your brain. It's good to let things sit for a bit, I think, too. So that's not being underprepared, but being overprepared is also can also be bad because then you're doing all this extra work for basically no reason. As you go through playing for a while, you start to understand how much you need to do. At first you might do a lot more than you need to and get burnout, like I was saying. And a burnout GM is not really that fun to play with, but <laughs> some GMs can pull it off. And being underprepared can be bad too, unless you're exceptionally good at improv -ing. I mean, everyone is kind of improv all the time in Dungeons and Dragons, but at the same time, it's dictated by a whole crap ton of rules. So that's why it's important for you to both know the rules and know how to improv at least enough to get through a three-hour game. And 11, last tip, is just have fun. You know, like as a DM, it can be really stressful because you're trying to do all these things at once. You're trying to learn both the adventure and the rules and who all the players are and how they behave and who all the NPCs are and the history of all the realms that that ever existed or whatever or whatever world you're playing in and it can be a lot to balance sometimes but for that single session does it really matter do i really need to know all those things not really but the goal is to just have fun and you should try your best to have fun while you're doing it i personally think it's really a lot of fun to be a dm so maybe at first you might feel more stress than joy, but trust me, as you get the rules and as you understand how to play, you will have more and more fun as you continue. And as for my own personal experience, being a dungeon master is awesome. All right, that's it for today. Check me out. I don't set schedules, but I'm going to try to like put one of these up a week or something like that, or whenever I can, whenever I have the time. Check out my other YouTube channel and support me on Patreon if you want to see more of these more often and stuff. I haven't updated my Patreon in a long time, but if anyone else joins it, I'll start updating again. Anyway, thank you, and have a nice day, and good DMing.